their parents speak to me and I help them all the time. I send them videos of what they can do. What's your advice or what do you suggest for, for that? Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 you know, the, the problem with um, the problem with a lot of parents is that they haven't played football, but they've watched football. Yeah. And then they put their children into what they didn't do in a way. They and they try to give advice to their children, and then sometimes because it is so difficult to become and come to that level. All I said and. Um, all I think, or what I did, I can only relate it to myself, and we're all different in how we, we get it, but all I believe is you can play and play and train as much football as you can, that will always make you better, that will yeah. always give you give you a chance, and then, then the two things I always believe, if you're going to be a top player, which is proven, is your first touch and pace, yeah. if you have none, if you have just your first touch and just the pace, you will never make it. Pace sometimes takes you out of trouble. So, so pace with the ball and with the ball, there are the two things that has to be. It has to be there, and that is the other thing. Because a lot of parents think they're going to an academy. It's going to make it. You're going to make it by yourself because you're in the academy. Yeah. But it's, it, that's not the truth. The truth is that the, the player itself has to be committed to it. And I think it's too early. I, I truly believe that going to an academy when you're 12 years old is a waste of time. I think you can be as good as you could be by playing with your local team. Yeah. Because you enjoy it, you have fun, it's relaxed, it's chill. You're 12 years old. You have no clue how good you're going to be. You have no clue whether you're going to make it or not. And that's my opinion. I, I think that it's such a long way from there. And why then start with the stress of academies? Yeah, okay, you get more training. Coaches that have normally played high level, you get good facilities, you get nice kit and all those things. But that doesn't make you a good football player. No. No, I think I think sometimes uh, people, especially kids, now they've got the wrong idea of it. When I was... When I was at school, I was the only one in my local area to be in an academy. Now it's sort of like they want to get into academy just because they say they play for an academy, and sometimes it's for the parents' ego, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, and that's the problem. And that's the problem. Uh, I, I think the parents are the problem in, the, in this thing, and I, 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 there are there the no. There isn't any kind of correct way of becoming a top player. There's so many ways of becoming a top player. There's, there's been thousands of like, different examples of how you get to the top. Some, like Ward Prowse, goes through an academy, uh, field ball court, look at them. But if you look at them, they have skills. Skills they looked after. Like Theo had an extreme pace. Yeah. But he, and with the pace, his technique developed as well so with that pace he had an advantage and that's how you get better and he looked after that advantage he knew really very early on that his pace would be the thing that would help him and because he had pace he would progress and progress and you couldn't get away around him because you would look at him flipping out he is quick yeah and you would put him in an early age and but i i look at Anna and i'm and I say this, if you can play men's football when you are 16, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be second division or, yeah, there's higher, they're better. Uh, and not every, there, there isn't many main winners anymore that comes in and plays for Everton when they're 16. I, I think those times are gone. But if you can play Wessex football when you're 16 and dominate Wessex football when you're 16, that's when you know you're going to be a good player. Yeah. I, I, th I think and then be chill be chill with where you are and, and the problem is in England and, and that's just, that's the other side from compared to to the rest of Europe is that when you play children's football they hardly train there's too many games and there's not enough training sessions mm. and I think that's where some of the problems I find in this country, even with men's football when I play men's football like we're playing in the, in the West Six now with Hyde we kind of train twice a week and have one or two games. But I, when I grew up and I played the same level, we, we trained five times a week. Yeah. We played every, trained every evening. If we had one game a, a week, we trained Monday, Tuesday, well, sometimes not Wednesdays, but we had Thursday, Friday, and then we had a game on Sunday or Saturday. And, then, and that's how it was. And I, 
And I think that's the amount of training or how much you put into it. Um, no. That's my opinion, but that's, that's different. We are different in, the, in that's that's good then because it's it's not it's not so dissimilar to my opinion. I I, I um I like that and I appreciate your opinion. I, I obviously say my opinion through an academy because I sort of went the whole way through. Um, yeah. And there's good bit. I I do the academy process all again. And there's bits where I do differently. There's bits that I couldn't help. Um, but what parents don't realise it's it's like taking on a second job. It it, it really is like taking on a second job. Taking my nephew to academy they're they're down there three nights a week yep. and and a match like you you as a parent have to be committed as well as the boy has to be committed yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, I i don't think a lot of the time it's they know what they're getting into and um i i i now use that to help kids and educate kids and parents especially my age group when they're so desperate to be in academy um yeah. Because it's not all what it's cracked up to be. Like, yes, it can be a really great thing and you can really enjoy your time there. But I remember my coach coming in and telling me, don't make friends with these people because only one of you might make it. And, and it's, Yeah, which is, which is wrong. And, I, yeah. and this, is, this is where I don't like the academy. And that shows the lack of education amongst the people who are in the, in the football industry. So yeah. It's very cynical. And cynical with lower age groups, I some a lot of people will try when they are, and you can prove it with different managers. Like, like you said, reward panels. How many managers he had that didn't like him, which yeah. he didn't try on, and now suddenly I got uh, Ralph, which he is now enjoying playing on there. So that and that shows how important I I believe that you have a connection with where you are, and you feel belong there, and you feel welcome there. Is part of it, and part of having teammates is that you thrive on being with other players which you like the company of if you don't yeah. like the company of the one you're with how are you going to enjoy what you're doing well that's exactly so my, i've made friends in at swindon and and obviously i met james through my dad created a six side team because my best mate um at swindon southampton signed for eight thousand pounds when he was nine southampton signed him from swindon and to stay in touch we created a six aside team um, and we won every tournament we ever played, and we played for about five years in the summer. And so obviously, St. Swindon didn't know we were doing it, and Southampton didn't know we were doing it. And in that team was Jordan Turnbull, who now who was my best mate. He he plays for Salford now. Salford. Okay, uh, yeah. um, Jake Sinclair, who's who was he doesn't he plays for Hereford now or or Wimborne. But his brother okay. Scott Sinclair, yeah. um, Dom Gape, I think who's at Wickham maybe now. Um, Ward Prowse. Um, yeah. And all these players that played a, a a decent level, and that's how we stayed in touch. And I've made good good friends from it. And um, yeah. and James has never changed, ever ever changed. Not really any of them have. They're all very level headed. I think what helps yeah, James yeah. is that he's very very intelligent as well. Yeah. His dad is very intelligent. Um, so it, I've kept friends from that. And my mum and dad have made lifelong friends through the academy system. But when you hear people say, you know, don't make friends because only one of you is going to make it, and it because it's such a dogfight to the end, it, it yeah. is. It is an absolute dogfight. And the parent coaching thing is is a disaster for a lot of these guys because that's where they they go wrong because dad or mostly dads, it's mostly dads. Let's yeah. be honest, yeah, it's yeah. mostly dads. That, um, <laughs> a lot of these players probably would get better. I got better by looking at my teammates when I yeah. did. And I, I looked at them and I was like, God, I like what he is. I'm going to try that. I, that. That's something I could be better at. And that's how I got better. I, 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 I truly looked at other players and copied and, and But also because I, I played for him and I knew he played for me, I got better. Yeah. And, and, the, and, and, and the proof of that is when you joined my session and talked yeah. you made the team you were on better and that shows that if you play together you are going to make each other better yeah there, there might be differences that he's going to pick but there is a very small margin of who get picked or not picked but by togetherness and this is the problem in england because you if you go to coach in england they will never share anything no they won't share anything and it is weird that now i'm going to share i'm doing my own stuff so you don't see what i do 
if you go, I'm not saying Norway is any better, but when you went to Norway, that, let me share everything, copy, take steel, do what he does, copy it, if you like what he does, stay a stealist, use it. Yeah. Don't be afraid of that, what's the point? Well, it's like, the best coach, every coach will copy something, the best coach in the world would have copied something from someone else, if you look yeah, at... That's something. Pep Guardiola, people class him as the best coach. He he copied a bit off Bielsa when they were in Spain. Yeah. So and yeah. he's uh, apparently the the best. And Klopp, you can imagine, has copied something. And and Hasen, who was probably copied off Klopp in a way because they're similar. But yeah, yeah, yeah. there's bits, uh, and it and it's just frustrating because I love learning stuff and knowledge of football and coaching, and that's why I've come to you. And you could have easily gone, no, you you, you didn't want to share, or Ruddy G is the same. He could have said, no, no I don't no, want to no, share. I'm different. I'm and this is what I said this to the other guys as well. And I said this to I said this to Chris as well. No, 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 I'm I'm not here for sitting on my own thing and not sharing. I want to learn from you as well. And I, I don't know we've got different football backgrounds, but I, I learned I like talking about football. I like hearing about football. I like all the ideas and I, I don't mind giving what I got. Why why is it's not gonna stop me from being any better at what I am. Yeah. Because I if I speak to other people and say what I think and they copy it, it wouldn't hurt me at all. I, I would like that. I, I, I see that as a strong side. That's, that's, if you find something you like with some other players, and I look at sessions when I'm down at the RTC, I'm like, oh, yeah, I like that session. That was a good session. Can I do that session? But, uh, but I didn't like that, so I'm going to tweak that out and do it this way. Is that that's how I, I, I go in, I, into that as well. I have like a kind of mindset what I like to do in a football session. Uh, and but then I'm saying, oh, yeah, that was I like that one. I can copy that one. Uh, go to Terry. Terry sessions. Terry has lots of sessions for kids, you know, uh, and I'm, he's brilliant with that. And I was like, yeah, I liked it, but I didn't like the bit there. I dropped that out. And then, so uh, copy, copy as much as you can and and share because it uh, it makes you when you talk about football, you get better. Yeah, it's like education. You get better when you are sharing and feedback and and. If you're going to sit there by yourself and not share anything, you, you, you're not going to get any better. I, you've got to copy. You've got to learn. You, you give away or take. or And you learn by giving away as well so, because you talk about football. Yeah, I, I think that's the big thing for me. Cause my, obviously, I've got an end goal of where I want to coach in the end. And yeah. RTC have been great for me, and I've got to meet people like you and, and, and coaches that are, you know, and experience. And um, I put... So I, you know that I've got a slightly similar coaching style. So I do a lot of ball mastery and skills and stuff. But I also know the other side of the game because I've been come up for an academy. Um, yeah. So I feel like, and that's what makes me very different. And that's why they sort of call me a skills coach at RTC, don't yeah. they? Because I can do all of that, which I think is really, really important as well. I think you, we need to be, as a country, better technically. I, I feel like we're creating... Um, um... One of them, yeah, I totally agree. And I, obviously, because my son plays football, he plays for the under 15s for Windsor. And I, I put no pressure on that. I, I help them coach a few sessions. I referee the games and I am there. And, and obviously, having me as his dad is not always the easiest thing because everyone knows. But uh, but I, I'm chilled and he's chilled with it. He's realised that I'm, I don't really. I, I mean, talk football and I say things and I, I give him hints. Uh, and he knows that. He knows now that what I'm saying is right, but he's realised it on the pitch. So it's it's, really, it's kind of a process. But but being a skill coach is is fantastic. And I but the problem with children's football is that and a little bit of an art to see because we we have good pitches, we train on the good pitches, it's astroturf. And I but we play in the wrong time of the year for skills, and we don't train enough. Yeah. That's the two things. It's one thing. Younger player people need to be trained and be involved with the ball, and they need to be on a good pitch. They need to be in the right environment. And I think children's football are playing on muddy pitches, called off, training called off. Because that's the, the reality in England during winter. You have so many games called off, uh, and and that's not helping the children to develop. Because you've got to be consistent, trained every week on the same thing, and and. And that's the problem, and that's the problem because most countries they will have either astroturf, they will train through the winter, or they will train more in the summer months, and use that as as for children's football. And I, I think you would get a lot more. You, you if you're going to develop skills, which I think is a, a a lot of English players don't have. I think if they change children's football to through the summer months, 
they have a little bit more skill because the pitches normally are better. Yeah. Like spring, autumn. And I, that is a problem. It's also the amount of training and the lack of um, 4G pitches around. I think if they had more 4G pitches, it would definitely help the technique training because you can, 4G can narrow it down to very small detail than the bumpy pitch. And, um, mm. So, yeah, yeah I, um, skills is so, so important. I, uh, so I I picked that up and I, I, I it's something that I really fell in love with just watching and and learning how to manipulate the ball and ball mastery and it's something yeah. that I've brought into RTC and I believe my stuff that my syllabus I've made and that I've got from other companies and sort of sold bits like you said and and um, the parents sometimes look at what I do and because it's a bit flicky and a bit tricky but it, it's more than that you have to believe in it and buy into it and. Yeah. And and it does work because I've got examples of pro footballers that will have trained the same way and and um it doesn't get you there and it it won't you know, but it will make you such a better individual. And if you you know, best dribblers of the ball we've probably got are Raheem Sterling and maybe Jaden Sancho, but we don't create enough. Yep. And I want us to no, be I'm... great dribblers of the ball and, and, and skillful and you need to be able to beat a player because it's one v ones all over the pitch. So I do a lot of 1v1s because if you don't win your 1v1 in in my training, you concede a goal. If you win a 1v1, yeah. you score or create something. And yeah. I, I, sometimes I'm a bit stubborn in my coaching. I believe my way's right. And because I'm young still, well, I think I'm young, I'm 25, but it, it, I believe this is the way to go. And sometimes parents question why I do ball mastery and skills. And, like, uh, and it, yeah. it's good to hear that you think... In a way, I'm right for doing it, and yeah, I, definitely. I'm by a million mile, I, 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 for all the age groups, and I think that is the, especially for your age group, the technical training with with the ball it, it is one of the most important things they do. Uh, if they can't receive a ball or do uh, something that creates space for them, uh, and, and there are so many ways of and being comfortable on the ball it, it, is absolutely the most vital thing for them I, uh, because the first touch on your ball always decides what's going to happen next and if you can get that automatically in their heads the one-on-ones which are on the pitches there are different ways of taking on one you can take someone straight off of the ball you yeah. can have a first touch past anyone you can there are so many ways of how you're receiving the ball that creates that one-on-one -on -one where you win it where you create yourself space to either give a good pass or go past him or and, and you you have to detail train that to the min, uh, the maximum to detail 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 so when it happens if you can then win that one tenth of a second quicker if you can do that skill one tenth of a second quicker you will have an advantage and that's that's how you got to think of it. And that advantage comes with repetition if you repeat 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 if like your first touch and I, and I, I, I said this on the 16th and so your first session, I like skills, but always choose the simple things first. Yeah. If you're good at the simple things, then the other things will come by itself. So I, I'm, I'm very aware that in football, if you look at football, if you're good at having a first session, good at say five yard, five to ten yard pass, you are going to be a good football player. Yeah. And I, I can relate to myself. I, I, I was lucky when I was younger. I played a lot of indoor football. I had an indoor hall available for me. And I used to play football, touches play. I had two goals on the side. I kick it in the wall, stop and shoot. And I used to do that constantly, constantly, and play games in my head and play football and play yeah. football and play football. And, and then my first touch was... Everything was like that. Everything was like that when I came to pitch. I, and that's because I've done it so many times, over and over and over again. And you can never overdo this. No, I, uh, I agree. The best players will do it over and over again. So when I, I got into futsal really randomly, and uh, I ended up playing the top league in the country, um, yep. and it, because everything was so under pressure, because every mistake you make in futsal can lead to a goal, or can yep. lead to a chance on goal, you have to be comfortable on the ball and you have to be able to yeah. use your body and manipulate the ball and want it in tight spaces. You might have a player at your back, you might have a player in front of you, yeah. but it, you, it's how you can control that. And it made me a better footballer at 22, 23 years old. It made me yeah, such a better footballer at that yeah, age. Totally right. And and yeah. that's why well, I do no, so I, much. Um, yeah, when I played on um, Saints, I mean, you know where Fleming Park is. Yeah. 
you know, just around the corner, day, day before they refurbished. Uh, then. They, they, I used to go, I, I lived around the corner up in Chilwell, so I used to go down there and I was a member of the gym because it was the only gym I could go to. But I used to go in the squash holes with a ball. Yeah. And play with myself, even though they thought I was a complete idiot. But I, I used to go there, and I did it even when I was playing Premier League football. I used to turn up there with a ball by myself and go and play touches on the walls, oh. different ways of hitting the ball, touching it, passing it, touching it, passing it. And I did that for my own training. And I, I used to spend half an hour in the, in, uh, in, in the squash holes or the tennis hall where I could run around and, and kick it into a wall and receive it and run with it. And, and, and they thought I was completely mad, but I used to do that. And they realized after a while why, why, why I did it. So they used to let me in and come in and use the squash holes when, when they were free. I just popped in and had a ball and boom, 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 boom used the walls. But that's the extra, I call it the extra 1%, isn't it? Stuff like that is what sets you apart and what yeah, helps you. Yeah, but that is what you have, that's what I think a lot of children, I think children's football, they should have fun, enjoy themselves and, and play football and play as much football as they can. And, and I now know that in academies they like to drill you into your position as early as you can because they want to... They want to drill your way of playing. If you're a right back, you're going to drill you into a right back, and that's where you're going to be. As early on, and I think because the level of football is has gone up such a high level, you've got to be very clear on where you're playing. Yeah. And I think and that's the same with touches as well. You've got to drill those touches to 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 the boredom in a way. But I used to enjoy that because it was my warm up, and I used to. I do, but it is, you've got to force yourself. It's the attitude of training. You've got to have the right attitude for training and willingness to do it yourself. In a way. Yeah, I d- yeah, I don't think that can be t- taught into you. I really don't. Stuff like that sometimes. I mean, I, I, I get out and train by myself. I take a ball because similar to what you just did, I, I will go through all my core skills, all my ball, ma- ball mastery myself yeah. and all the skills I do myself. I, I went up for a whole week and learnt my whole syllabus so I could do it on both feet. Um, because my dad drilled into me when I was little, you have to be able to use both feet. And now I can take corners with my left foot and my right foot. And it's not until I look back that how much it helped me because being able to use both feet is, is, is massive and all my ball mastering core skills and, and everything like that, I make them do on both feet um, because it can change your game completely. You can receive the ball with your left foot, do a quick skill, get it out on your right foot and play a killer pass or, or lay it off, have a shot. And it, it, you've got to be able to... But that's got to come from inside, uh, having that uh, willingness to learn. Yeah, I yeah think. definitely. And I, and I, because I'm, um, I use the gym down there, Tottenham now, because it's closer to where I live in Linden. And I, I go there, and they have an indoor hall. I still use that as warm up with a ball. <laughs> I still go in there with a ball because oh, wow. I enjoy it. I, I enjoy, but that's because I play football with the higher dims, and I keep my touch in. So I know I have to keep my t- my, my touches in, 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 and also for fitness because I've still been playing. So, I mean, I still out of 48, I'm still doing that on my own. It's, yeah, really, it's, it's amazing. Because it's... it's my warm up and I enjoy it. And that's, and that's kind of because I, that's what I've done all my life. So, that's why I'm, I'm still doing it. It's brilliant. But I, I generally just enjoy taking a ball up the field by my house and just doing bits like that. I generally enjoy it. I'm not doing it because yeah. I want to improve. Yeah. I, I, that, I know I'm no, going to improve no, by doing it. But I love doing it, it, it the fresh air, the the exercise, and then being able to do everything. And that's why I go back to being able to play, I think, helps with coaching. My dad is very old fashioned where he thinks people that haven't played football to a high standard don't know anything about football. And in some aspects, I think that is true. And in some aspects, I think he's very old fashioned. But he, he has this thing where he, oh, he'd never played football to a high standard. What does he know? Um, so I think it goes back to... I want to be the best I can be to help my under 12s or anyone I can coach. Because if I can motivate, if I can be relatable, they'll learn more off me. And and they'll, if I enjoy coaching and it, they can see me enjoy it, then I think that will help them just as much. Yeah. And most importantly, and I say this, if you don't enjoy what you do, and that's what you've got to give to the to the ones you coach and whatever level you coach whether it's men's football on the 12th if you and that's what I did when I went to Tottenham in the the first time I said okay I know I can coach and I know I can lead because I have I have quite a high leadership practical leadership education in my education and I, I knew I could do that and that wasn't the question but that's my my aim was I'm going to go in here firstly can I enjoy coaching and I'm going to make am I going to 
make them enjoy what they do. And if I can do that, then I know I can coach. And that's how I looked at it. And they, because I enjoyed it, but they enjoyed it. And that was the most important thing. I, I want to see if I can get this group of players who are amateurs. They, they don't earn any money. They come in for their free will. If I can get them to enjoy playing football, they will work harder. They will get better. And they will go by itself. And, that, and, and that's the, I think that's where the clue is in football. If you get a 12-year-old to enjoy himself when he's on the football pitch, he will improve. Yeah. If he's not enjoying it, he's not going to improve. If he's there because his parents says you have to be there and we pay a lot of money for you to be here, then, then you know that he's never going to improve. No, I, I think I think that's spot on. I don't want to keep you too long because I, I don't want to be, you know. Yeah, that's fine. It, 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 what, I'm what, in lockdown, George. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I just, <laughs> I, I'm, I, I like, I like talking, as you can see. So it's, it, I, I have yeah, to stop. No, 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 I, I don't worry about time. I, I'm not. Uh... I only got my wife to talk to. We talk to each other every day. <laughs> what advice have you got for me as a coach? Because I I literally love coaching. I, I I love waking up and and trying to learn something new. It's a little bit sad. I'm not going to lie, but I I love football and it, you know and everyone yeah, knows yeah. that. And, and that's a good thing. But how old how old are you now? I'm 25, 26 next month. So I I am okay. still young, but I I worry yeah. that. Um, you know, I've only got a few years left in my prime. And what 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 advice have you got for me as a coach and, and me as a footballer? Because technically, I believe that I could still make it a, a decent standard. I, I think I need to fill out a little bit. Um, not saying I'm going to push football, but I mean, I still believe I could make a living out of football and out of coaching together. Um, I do well with my coaching company, my own one-to-one coaching company. But I just want to know what advice you got for me as a player and a coach, really. Yeah, good question. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I will say to you: don't stop playing. Just play as long as you can, even though you're coaching, because I, 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 I truly believe that the playing bit is going to make you a better coach. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think that's. Don't stop playing. Just play as long as can, even though whatever level you play on. You play men's football, play football, be involved in football in yourself. And, because you're obviously going to be a little bit ambitious when you play. I, I still play. I don't still, I don't like losing still. I, I, I still like being better than a player I play against. Even though I'm 150 years old, I still like that. And I still, that is, I go to training, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be better than him. I still have that in me and I enjoy it. And then, and I know that because I'm playing football, I'm going to be a better coach. So I know by being in football, learning, seeing things, whatever way you see it, and you, obviously it changes with how long you play and where you've been and, and with age and what you learn. Everything plays in together, but being in football as long as you can. Never give up playing before, because that is the best learning you can have, being on the football pitch, even as a coach. Even, even when you play teams, because you learn how you play against teams, you learn how they set up, you learn, you, you notice small little things. And you think, ah, oh, yeah, the other coach on that, the team I'm playing against, he is actually quite smart. Yeah. And if you can catch those things while you are playing, that, it's so wonderful, because that, that's, the, that's the best learning place in the world for being a good coach. Yeah. And then coaching-wise, it, it, it's just experience, a little bit of experience. It, it comes with things, it comes with small things. You, you know already what you like coaching at. And then you, the difference is you've got to see which level you are coaching and where you want to go and who you're coaching. And there's a difference in coaching and on the 16th team to uh, on the 12th team. And you just have to realise the steps in that. And you've got to treat the other 16 more as adults than you do on the other 12th. So you you got to find a level where you are in the terms of, of coaching. And and sometimes coaching-wise, and I, and I think you, uh, what I know about you, that uh, you got to find what's important to coach on. Because you don't need to coach everything. Yeah. You got to find the things that you think is very very important for how you coach. Yeah. And then stick to them because some of the things players do on the pitch, and there can be a different way of doing it. But there are things, and a lot of people who aren't good at coaching, they spend time on things they don't need to spend time on because they can't see past it. Yeah. But you got to see, and I think you 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 have that in you that you can see that. 
I don't need the coach on that because he's doing it. Well, okay, maybe not in the way I like, but he gets to the end product, which, which I'm into. It can either be like his positioning play, his. Well, I did, I did the. Um, I did the. Um, was it the under 14s? Right. Oh, on the 13s. Who, who runs the on the 14s? So, Fra- is, is it Fran and Jack? Fran and Jack do the under 14s? Was it Fran? Uh, or was yeah, it? I think it was Fran that was away, and I yeah. did the, and they're quite good, aren't they? Yeah, the fourteens. Yeah, but yeah. I came in and coached them, and I noticed something. I did a session where I did a possession session first. I did a one on one, and then I did a game, and I noticed straight away on how they created space, how they adjusted their body on their first touch, which is very unusual for that. Yeah, trip. yeah. I noticed they did this without me, and I knew they are doing that. That's what I was after. That's why I did the session. They're doing it. I don't need to coach them on this. I just need to encourage them to put pressure on quicker because if I then get the team that hasn't got the ball to put pressure on quicker, that touch and that body positioning will happen faster. Yeah. So I then realised that, okay, what I was after is their body position, their first touch, directional touch in the way they got. That's what I wanted to coach them on because I didn't think they were there yet. But they were there. And then I realised that they also knew to create more space. They stepped away. They yeah. didn't come through the ball. They stepped away. So they got more space as possible. So I said, okay, I know. They, they're doing this. They know it already. I don't need to coach them. I realised I had to coach the other team that didn't have the ball to put pressure on better. Yeah, okay. Because then that part of the game, which is so important, they got better at. So that's how how you got to start seeing things when you go up at ages. Is that... I'm after the first touch, but if the first touch is good, how can you challenge the first touch to be even better? Yeah. So, so that's how you've got to challenge yourself. So you, you've got to look at, I'm after a passing session, I'm after a positioning play, or, or, and if the positioning play is good, you've got to find a way to challenge the positioning play. So you have to think more. And, that, and that's how you become better. How can you get that touch to be quicker? How can you get that positioning play to be better? Yeah. And, and, and it's not always talking it through. It's by enforcing something else on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's the bit, the, the big thing for me. I think under twelves down is a perfect area for what I coach. Um, yeah. But when I first came to RTC, I started working with the the older age groups, and what I found is that I I enjoyed almost talking to them because you got a lot back from the twelves up to the sixteens. I, I sort of took part in loads of bit of sessions when coaches weren't there and I I didn't really have a team yet because I'd just joined so I was yeah. all I did from the 16s down to the bottom age group and I think I think that's what coaches really struggle with they can't they can't work with the under 16s and they can't work with the under 7s my first nah, of, a, lot of, a lot of a lot of coaches are scared of yeah. the older ones yeah I, I, but I also think they're scared of doing the younger ones as well they want a happy medium in the, in the middle um, yeah I, I, I find the younger ones a little bit uh, harder as well and it's because I I don't mind doing it, but I I find it hard because I I don't I, I feel like I'm babysitting them. In yes. I, yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I'm a little bit bored of that. I want to I want to put it into them a little bit quicker because you you got to break it down. The younger they are, the more you have to break it down, and I think that is important. You got to break it down to if you are practicing first touch, you got to make it simplified. You got yeah. to. It's almost like. Two cones, pass it, take it past the cone on one side, pass it back, take it past it. And you've got to almost break it down there. So, but it is more challenging in that way because you, you then learn the basics on a very low level, which probably is what standing foot is about your balance, it's your body positioning, and, and all those things which are really, really important. Yeah, so you that... know that aspect of things and it helps you later on that sort of stuff. That's why I enjoy coming to watch the under sixteens after after our, I coach under twelves because I like that age group. I like the idea of that yeah. they're about to possibly play in the same team as me. Yeah. Um, it's that age group, and there I really enjoy working with the top age group as well as the bottom age group. I don't think there's many coaches who can adapt. Hard for me to say, but you you have because obviously Matt and Bob are trying to make it look like more like an academy in a way. Yeah? And attract more players that have fallen out. Yeah. And obviously, you with your background and from an academy is going to be vital. I can see why you, they relate to you in, in terms of that and, and 
because I, I think they want to present a bit basic coaching and basic technique and uh, but uh, learning football uh, knowledge about football and I learn when I listen to you because I know when I watch your coach and I watch some of the sessions you have and I watch you like okay that's smart thing and I watch your your skills on the kitchen floor and things like that and it, 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 and it is when you do you know what you're doing yeah and when you know what you're doing, you know you're in respect of what you're doing. And I think that is how you become a good coach as well. Only coach, and I always say this, uh, I say this to myself, I say, only coach things, never coach anything you wouldn't do yourself. Yeah. yeah. You're going to coach things. Don't do things you didn't do, I said, or didn't enjoy or didn't believe in yourself. Don't do that. Do things you believe in yourself. Because if you, you do coaching things you, you don't want to do, then... They're going to see it through. You're going to, that's when you lose the respect of things. No, I agree. I agree. So, uh, no, I really appreciate that. And I, it, it's just good to sort of chat at the minute as well. Yeah, as, but, as, but especially. This is the, this is, the, again, this is the problem in England. People don't work together. They don't help each other. They don't talk football. If you don't talk football or sit down now, look, I can't tell you what I do because I, it's my thing. Yeah. It becomes wrong. It, you, you don't develop anything. We don't become better at the RTC either. Then. And, and, and that reflects on all of us and it reflects on me when you do well or it reflects on Chris if I don't do well with my team so, uh, and it's not about results it's about doing well and developing uh, players this lockdown yeah. I, this lockdown I think hit harder than any lockdown yeah I am I, it's hard for children uh, this lockdown I, I feel sorry for children uh, you lose out so much and children you are meant to be uh, you're not meant to sit still and not do anything. You're meant to be out, run around. When you're 12, you're not meant to be inside or be. You're meant to go out, play with your friends. You run around, do stupid stuff, go on your bikes, and that's how how they become fitter and so that's the best fitness training they can do. So uh, it's not just about running or getting those habits in. It's about be, just teaching them to get out of the house and and go on a bike and go to play park or play basketball or yeah. It, and that's the things they get better at. That's where the fitness comes from. Well, that's why I'm so happy with my twelves because they've really bought into it. I mean, we've we've ran uh, 260 miles in the last two weeks. My team combined, and I yep. send them skills tutorials. Uh, I've sent them drills that they can do with their mum or dad. So I've done a video of me like doing a drill that you can do with a mum and dad or or a brother yep. just to help them with technique, little volleys, little pot volleys, little skill volley touches back into the hands little body shape drills that you can just do with two people and just someone feeding you with a ball because yeah. you know and I, I send them funny videos like challenges because I can be quite skillful and I can do things and I have yeah. the facilities to do them because I've got my own goal and, and I try and send them as much as I can because you know I want to keep them physically fit but also I want yeah. to keep them mentally healthy um, yeah. because yeah. Mental, yeah. mental health yeah. is something I care about and it, yeah. you know and oh, I, definitely I, I totally agree to that I I am, there's a lot of children who hasn't. It's not in a good place now during the lockdown. But it's it's definitely like that. Day. And I see it on my own children. That day. Michael is very good. He gets out. I see it on Mia when she's so much happier. When she we get her out and she goes out, she's much happier. And you can see that how much it helps. So yeah, definitely very important. I am. Have you got? Is it, when you do skill on your? Because I've seen some of the skills. You know, have you got a little pitch outside your house or? Uh, so I've got, uh, so I've got uh, at the minute at my mum's work. We've got I've got a big office room that I can do in there, or I can go to um, I can go to a uh, there's a football pitch right outside my house, pretty much, and then I've got a multi court um, uh, gym is like sort of outdoor bit that I can use. Um, so I'm sort of lucky to have all of that that I can do. Um, so it's reasonably easy, and obviously I I like editing videos and putting bits together. So to do that it, it, it suits me and that's what I enjoy doing you do a lot I know you do a lot and I because I, I see you on the Zoom and I, I watch it sometimes I know what you're doing so and that's what they need to look after as well because without without you guys on there because I, I haven't done anything <laughs> wait um, without you then what would they have if you didn't it was brilliant listening to you on Solent as well commenting on the Saints game yeah I thought it was I, I'm, really I'm trying good. to get in there George, I've been working a little bit with uh, 
Adam, uh, Adam, because you know Dave Merrington has been there for a while. So yeah. he, he, there were some rumours he was going to stop working this year. Okay. So I got him there last year, and the Adam, well, they, me and Adam clicks. So we have click. We work. We bounce off each other, and yeah. he like enjoys having me there. So I am. Uh, he was meant to have me in this year. He said, and so I said, I'm happy. I would love to work with you guys because I, I enjoy radio. So um, and. Because the guys down there are really good guys. Everyone's nice to talk football, uh, George. You can always talk football to me. No, I, ap- I appreciate it. Thank you. Re- really, yeah, really so good to talk to you. I, um, I come from the same uh, environment as you. I've just been a little bit luckier and played higher, some higher level than you have. So that's all it is. No, well, I, I really, really appreciate it. Thanks. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll send you a message soon. I hope you all your family keep safe and well. And yeah, and we'll uh, look after your mum. 